part of the science mission within the United States and the programs that we have inside of NOAA, the National Science Foundation, NASA, and many other agencies of the U.S. government is to measure the changes and the aspects of the world's oceans. And it's really hard for us to even believe we could try and do that alone. It's very uneconomical for us to try and do that alone. By bringing the information back from ocean observing systems to scientists around the world, we're able to provide for the knowledge of what our weather will be, what our seasons will be, and what type of extremes we'll be exposed to. The United States and the partner nations that have joined us on the existing global ocean observing systems are very proud of what we've accomplished so far, but we have a ways to go. And we are looking increasingly at a knowledge of the oceans through these observing systems that I might make a parallel to a medical patient. We care for the oceans, we care about the oceans, and we're trying to measure the changes in the oceans and also the baseline of the oceans. So we have the pulse, we have the respiration, we have the blood pressure of the oceans, but interestingly, we don't yet have that full body x-ray of the world's oceans. Really, we're answering global questions, and we have global partners brought together through the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission to join in that undertaking. And the importance of such a body as the IOC in order to bring these different components and delegations together to develop plans, recruit the willing participation, coordinate the cruises and the deployments of these tools that we use in order to measure and monitor the ocean is facilitated by the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission. In the mid-1980s, where we began to construct an ocean observing system in the Pacific. We were very early joined by Japan in that undertaking, so two nations teamed together in order to measure the changes in the Pacific Ocean. We were on the hunt for the answer to the various El Nino, La Nina cycles that were being detected. And when these take place, they influence the seasonal weather in the United States, in the middle of the country, on both coasts, and throughout. And that weather influence also, at a seasonal level, impacts fisheries productivity, where fishers can go to catch their stocks. And we very quickly realized that this is a global phenomenon. Today we have from satellite two kilometer to five kilometer resolution of ocean space. What's at the bottom of the ocean at two to five kilometer from satellite. At that level, if we were to visit London, we would miss St. Paul's Cathedral. It would be leveled out into just one pixel. We would miss in Paris the character of the Eiffel Tower. We would miss the great skyscrapers in Shanghai. There are features in the ocean that we're not seeing given our current level of mapping. That's an important objective for us to really understand the totality of the oceans. We're observing it, we're observing it well, and we intend to do better and we need to map the world's oceans so that we understand the totality of this earthly system. That knowledge is going to help us in fisheries production, in safe marine transportation, in terrestrial weather forecasts, seasonal forecasts, and climate forecasts, each of which will influence the prosperity of our current and future populations.